Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, members of the Fourth Estate. This is Rongo branch of the Kenya National Union of Teachers. Today was a big day for Rongo branch because they had their annual general meeting. And this meeting has come after quite some time. You know, Kenya National Union of Teachers went dead from the year 2019. And in the last time Rongo had a branch uh, AGM was in 2018. To this time, those are quite a number of years. Uh, well, that said and done, and even appreciating the fact that teachers have also really enjoyed the AGM, and the branch was prepared to the teeth to conduct a wonderful AGM, as you saw. If it is a matter of equating this branch, this branch has scored of 100 percent. Yeah, this is very, very great. We have addressed issues as Kenya National Union of Teachers through the fact that I'm the spokesperson and some of the key issues that I've addressed stood or bordered around, uh, around the collective bargaining agreement review that was there yesterday between Teacher Service Commission and Kenya National Union of Teachers. That review came as a blessing to this union because over times we've been writing to teacher service commission and at the meeting they even displayed to us several letters that we wrote uh, for which they did not respond but the last one that we wrote sometimes in the month of uh, july there was this response and they convinced a meeting to review the collective bargaining agreement what we were treated to by Teacher Service Commission was basically around the pronouncement of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto. And uh, what he pronounced, about the 7 to 10 percent, is exactly what Teacher Service Commission brought on the table. At, some, at one point I asked them, yes, okay, we are going to consume this. But it was a pronouncement from the president. The president, where is your is your offer? Mm. But then they said legally, anything pronounced to teachers must be negotiated again because it is by law. It has to go through salaries and remuneration commission, then presented to teachers service commission, upon which we must deliberate as two entities on how this should actually be spread. Now, SRC, as you saw initially, two weeks ago, in the print media, SRC had proposed, had backed the 7 to 10 percent. And they gave out figures that we could not understand. We said no, we, and rejected the proposal by SRC on how uh, the 7 to 10 percent was to be spread. We said, no way, it cannot be spread that way. We must sit with Teacher Service Commission, and indeed, Teacher Service Commission listened. So, what we actually got into, the proposal from TSC, after indicators from Kenya National Union of Teachers, which pegged the, the spread to mean that teachers were earning less now, and I made reference to B5, C1 and C2, and C3, should get the biggest chunk in terms of percentage of this little thing that was being spread. Then those teachers at the higher cadre, that is D5, D4, D3, you come up to, up to C5, should get the least if this was to be spread. Our argument came from the background of what happened in the 2017-2021 CBA, where after job evaluation by Salaries and Remuneration Commission, administrators were awarded the most. So we, want, we wanted a total inversion of what was being presented now, so that this time the least paid gets the highest percentage, Correct. and the highest paid get the least uh, uh, percentage. And that is very logical. Whoever's opposing that does not know what he or she's talking about 
or you want to think of yourself more than think about others. Now, again, uh, you reminded me of the presidential working part, proposals and the report. We really welcomed all the proposals of the presidential working party. Correct. At some point, we got relieved because as Kenya National Union of Teachers, we went to court in 2019. We took the, the Council of Governors to court and told them, teachers in ECD are registered by Teacher Service Commission. Correct. We know too well that the, the Education Act is very clear about uh, education, basic education, being from ECD to second. That is ba basic education. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the Constitution 2010 actually brought in the complication of devolving early childhood education, basing it on what was earlier being called the county councils that employed nursery school teachers. Right. Now that complex actually made us lose the argument because these teachers in ECD are registered by Teacher Service Commission. It beats logics that now at remuneration and even quality assurance is now not from Teacher Service Commission. So we said we must revisit this. In our presentation to the Presidential Working Party, which was by that time referred to as a task force that was named by the President, eminent educationists being part of this task force. We made a presentation and said, fine, yes, ECD is devolved, but it doesn't make sense. Because those teachers employed by are, are registered by Teacher Service Commission. Because the law is very clear. You cannot stand before children in this country if you don't have a registration number from Teacher Service Commission. Correct. Now that they are registered, why can't we have them paid or remunerated by Teacher Service Commission? And I think we hit a jukebox in this proposal. The report from the Presidential Working Party now is that ECD teachers shall be remunerated by Teacher Service Commission. Commission. And we are supporting that. Yeah. And I said it here at the meeting. Some cases are so pathetic. Some cases border crime where a teacher is in ECD does not even earn a single cent. The teacher is being paid maize and beans. I give an example. What is maize and beans? Are you paying a worker? Are you just giving a token? So we are saying that the presidential working party did well in that recommendation. And it is a report that Kenya National Union of Teachers would wish to implement as it is away from one proposal about head teachers. There is a silent proposal that head teachers of institutions and where these head teachers are, don't have degrees that they will be demoted. I think that one, that is just a big dream. It is a dream. Because if you don't understand the career progression guidelines that states a head teacher to be, head teacher and deputy, to be a substantive employment mm. Substantive in the sense that you cannot be demoted. The only way that you can get out of that position is you exit. You cannot be, there's no reverse gear. So no single head teacher can be taken back to the classroom to teach. No single head teacher, deputy head teacher, can be taken back to class to teach. What we are saying, and I can confirm it, it happened. Teacher Service Commission interdicted head teachers because of CBC. And when they are being absorbed back, TSC made sure that every head teacher who was interdicted was retained back to an institution as a head. Mm. Yeah. True. So when, when we think that we can, you know, have hazardly give a treatment to these teachers as heads and deputies, I, I think that is very wrong. And that is why I want to say it is a big dream, not in bed, but a dream while walking. We cannot allow those demotions. I'm part of one person who got into 844 system. And I found a head teacher, deputy head teacher, the old P3s. And class 8 was there. Mm. I was the only P1 in that, uh, in that school. But they were not demoted. Uh, learners sat for exams. They only exited. Mm. 
So why do you demote them this time round? I don't think that is not the best way to, to, to go about it. If anything, it is one of the worst labor practices that even, if anything, should even be reported to ILO. Yes, in Geneva. It is not a case that can be taken lightly. It is simply because a new system is coming. To pave way, I must be demoted. Never.